Hey everyone, this is the video that was never supposed to happen because we are going to hook up some solar to Project Overkill. I may not have mentioned it in the playlist for Project Overkill and all of the previous videos, um, but that was originally designed to just be an emergency backup. It was never intended to be a daily use uh, system that had solar power to power things on a daily basis. So the original intent of that was purely just to sit there, uh, keep it charged, and then if the power goes out, you kick it on and you can run your sump pump, your fridge freezer, your food's not going to go bad, do all that stuff. Um, well, my father-in-law finally came around and realized that it is significantly more useful to have a little bit of solar power and a charge controller, because he already had the battery and inverter, uh, and then he can use that on a daily basis for daily basis needs. How many times am I going to say daily basis in this video? No more. This is also my first time doing a roof mount solar system. For this, we bought some Iron Ridge rail and feet, so I'll go over that mounting system in a, in a little bit in the video, uh, but basically what you do is find the rafters uh, on the roof, and then they have something called a flash foot, which is flashing, and then it's got a, a main stud that the railing mounts onto. That's all going to make a lot more sense here in a few minutes, but suffice it to say that I always thought it was really complicated to do a roof mount system. Every time I looked into it, there was a ton of different parts that you could buy, and honestly, I just got overwhelmed and stopped looking. Um, but it's actually really simple. There's like six or seven parts that you need, uh, and it's extremely easy. So for this system, we have six 305 watt panels. These are black framed, real fancy looking, uh, and the railing and everything is also black, so it blends in really well with the roof, which is a very aesthetically pleasing uh, look. So we're going to have about 1830 watts of solar panels on the roof, configured in a 3S 2P, so we'll have 100, approximately 150 volts input and 16 to 18 amps of solar input and we're going to run that into a Victron 15035 smart solar solar charge controller uh, which is Bluetooth enabled for data logging. It's got a really nice app. All of your parameter changes can be done on the app. I love it. I actually used to have a Morningstar and I switched over to Victron just because of the convenience of changing parameters and monitoring. Let's jump ahead to me finding the rafters in the roof and just dig right into this. All right, so I have all of the points that I'm going to mount the flash feet at marked with uh, some sidewalk chalk, uh, but it'll get the job done. So now what we need to do is take this quarter inch drill bit and you need to drill pilot holes in all of these locations where the rafter is gonna go for our lag bolts that the flash foot uses. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this is where this thing's gonna live. You can see the markings here on the, the right and left side to help you level this thing out. So you can kind of set that where you need it. And then uh, this is gonna be where our lag bolt goes. You can see that you sleeve it up under the previous layer of shingles. So it's kind of a cool setup. I really like that. So I uh, <laughs> guess it's time to drill some holes.
So you can see on these, these are knurled, so that way they grab the railing. And so these are currently mounted up on the roof, and then we use these um, to mount into the rails. So this drops in here like so, and then when you rotate it, it locks in so it can't come out. So this will go here, this goes under here, you tighten it down, and that's how you lock into the railing for the feet. So that's how you mount to the feet, and then on the top side you have another rail, or a slot actually, and these do the same thing. These are called UFOs, uh, right? Yeah, sure. They have the same design. These drop in here like this, and then when you rotate it, it holds it in as well. And these have uh, edges on this to actually dig into the solar panels, so that way they're electrically connected to the railing. Um, so like I said, everything on this, once you tighten everything down, all of it is electrically connected. You only need one ground. And then these are stopper ends. I ordered 40 millimeter ones because that's for the thickness of our solar panel. So on the very ends, because you won't have two panels butting up to one another for either side of this, you put this on here, it clicks in, and then it locks in, and now you can have a panel butt up here, and this acts as a spacer on the other side of it, so when you torque it down, it's not twisting this bolt. So we bought four 14 foot sections because we figured it's better to have extra than not enough. Uh, but we only need 22 feet, not 28. So we're gonna trim six feet off of this now. So that way everything will fit correctly. All right, so we have our 14 foot piece, our two 14 foot pieces and our two eight foot pieces to give us 22 feet total. And so we just cut this with a Sawzall. And the way we're gonna connect these is with this splice. And you can see it's got these tabs on here. Um, and all of this grounds together. So the way the Iron Ridge system is set up, you need one grounding clamp for every pair of rails uh, because everything makes electrical contact. And you can see on this, when you slide them in there, get my thumb out of the way, you see that little tab right, right above my thumbnail? So it stops the uh, rails, so it stops them right in the middle. And then you just take a couple of self-tappers uh, and run through the rail into this to hold them into place. So we're going to use these number 10 by half inch self tappers to hold the splices in place with the railing. So to get equal height on this rail, I used a screwdriver to go underneath the nut on the uh, fork for the railing, and then I tightened it down with the same uh, height on each one of these, so that way they would all be level.
Project Overkill officially has solar power. We have our Victron Energy Smart Solar 15035s, that's voltage and amperage. Uh, MPPT, our battery positive and negative, PV positive and negative here. And you can see that we're bringing in 730 watts right now. So I have my float voltage for the battery down here, this, set to 47.6, which is about 3.4 volts per cell to try and extend the cycle life of the batteries. So uh, cutting off at 3.4-ish volts per cell and um, stopping discharge at about 2.8 volts per cell it significantly extends the cycle life of these lithium iron phosphate cells. You can double the cycle life um, just by cutting out that you know, 10 to 15% of the capacity. But there we go. And good to go, guys. Up and running. All right, so unfortunately, it was toward the end of the day when I recorded that last bit of video, so we couldn't see the full output of the solar panels, but they do put out 17 to 1800 watts. Um, and my father-in-law has plugged in two window units. Uh, they cool his house, his entire house, um, and it's a Medea, the U uh, window units. They're like, they have the compressor and everything on the outside and then the window closes in between and then it's got the blower and everything on the uh, inside of the house. Uh, really efficient. Uh, he has a 12,000 BTU unit in his dining room and then he has an 8,000 BTU unit in his bedroom. And he's been running both of those set at 60 degrees for the past few days and he still has power to spare. It's going into float at 3.4 volts per cell. So pretty cool to know that you can cool your entire house purely off of solar power um, with a relatively small uh, setup. But because of the placement, I don't know if you guys could really tell, there's nothing in the way. There's no trees, there's no shadowing. His garage is the closest thing to causing a shadow, which it only does in the winter months when we don't get a lot of sunshine anyway. But he has about the ideal placement for solar panels as far as wide open skies all day long just bringing in the power. I believe it's Google that has a solar project that they're doing. It's basically Google Maps but it shows you rooftops and uh, which ones get the most sun hours. So his lit up like a Christmas tree. Uh, it really doesn't get any better than what he has going on. I'll leave a link for that in the description. It's kind of cool to just check out and, and look at different rooftops. Maybe your roof uh, might be really, really well suited to solar. I'm going to let Project Overkill run on solar for a few weeks and kind of data log what kind of kilowatt hours per day it brings in. And I'll probably report back to you on that in the future. All right, everyone, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Hey, everyone. In this video, we are going... Hey everyone, this is the video that was never supposed to happen. We are going... I'm also going to do a... <laughs> this is also going to be my first time doing a solar... Let's dig in. I didn't tell you anything yet. But for now, that's it for this video. Thank you all for... Mm-mm.